Alright guys, welcome back. This is the board game here. Today we will be playing Red Rising. I already set up the board here. Our faction, I got Minerva and I also randomized who goes first between me and the Automa and I uh, was chosen the first by the great Shuatsi. Um, on the board, we have some cards here. The Automa's priority will be on the Institute because it's the letter A. Um, on the Luna, we have the Jupiter effect for the Automa, and I chose the color gold for the Automa. Um, I will not be teaching you anything. I'm just gonna let you in on the ride while I play this game. So this is not gonna be a how to uh, how to play video. If you don't know the rules of the game, this is not a video for you, unfortunately. Uh, but don't worry, there there are a lot of videos on YouTube that teaches you how to play the game. This is very simple anyway. Anyway, let's start. We will give the AI or the Automa two cards. I will be putting it here. There we go. He starts with two cards. We start with five cards. So we have Virga Martyr. This is gonna include, this is gonna involve a lot of reading. So whenever I read uh, a card, I will just cut it from the video so you don't so you don't get bored. Also, I almost forgot I have two shots here, one of the board and one of my cards. But I don't think you can read that very well. But yeah, I go first. Actually, this is good. I have the martyr. The martyr says that um, if if an opponent tries to to take the sovereign token from me, I can reveal this. To block them and i can banish this card essentially stopping the automa from getting a sovereign token and i get a new card from that but if i keep this one until the end of the game it allows me to gain one card of my choice from mars if i can secure the sovereign token until the end of the game so there's a choice here so for the meantime i'm going to increase our progress in the fleet track because virga if i deploy her it will allow us to advance twice on the fleet track so i'm going to do that one and i want to get the masseuse i'm gonna do that later so i'm gonna put this on mars virga on mars and then it allows me to advance twice one two the automa advances once then i can take a card i'm going to take i'm going to take mateo then it's the ai's turn we're just gonna flip two of these cards um it says here place a card on b and then takes a card from the Luna space, which is this one. She takes Mickey the Carver. This will only give him or her three points at the end of the game because this is an odd number. He wants even number that will give him six points each at the end of the game. So we're putting there and there's a star here. That means this Luna space activates. She gets the sovereign token. I'm not sure if I'm going to stop that. Maybe not now. It's too early. So she gains the, the sovereign token and the effect of Jupiter. So she increases one space on the fleet track. There's just one of uh, his activations. So next, he will put card on A, then take a card from C, which is from Jupiter. Uh, he takes Ash Lord. So whenever we have to combo with Ash Lord, we will disregard that because it, the AI already got that. And it will take the effect of the Jupiter as well because there's a star. He's now 3 on the fleet track. Now it's our turn. Okay, so I really want the masseuse because that's powerful. I I'm gonna show you later. So what I'm going to do here is if I play this pink card, I will be able to move any other card from this location to the top of another location. And if it's a pink, I place one on the influence track. So uh, the masseuse is in the institute, so I place Mateo there. Another thing. So I will choose that masseuse. I'm gonna put him in a place where I want to progress. Alright, so where do we put this masseuse that we got? Uh, right, so I wanna catch up to him in Jupiter, so I'm going to put it in Jupiter. It says here if I move the pink, I gain, I place one influence on the institute. And I'm going to take the masseuse that would give me a spot on the fleet track. Alright, so with the masseuse, what does it do? When we deploy him, we will move the top card of another location to another location and we gain that location bonus. So, uh, basically we will gain twice location bonus twice in one round. So it's the AI turn. Places a card on A. Takes a card from Mars. So, he takes Virga. That's even number. That's six points for him. 
And another one, he places a card on C and takes from Mars again. With an effect this time. Because there's a star. So he gains a Helium. There it is. That's his turn. Now let's try to think of a combo. The Masus will give us 30 points if we have a Copper. Which we have now Administrator. But it's too early in the game to commit to this, uh, to this hand. For now, I'm gonna play the Dancer. Which will give us one Helium. Because I don't really like this card, it's, it's so powerful. So I'm gonna put this in Luna. Yeah, Luna. And I'm gonna take Calliope. Sorry, when I place him on Luna, I'm gonna take uh, Helium. I'm thinking of taking Uncle Narrow so that we can gain 2 Helium later on. Or Calliope. Calliope is reveal the top card of the deck, then deploy it face up on another location and we gain. 20 points if we have the Jackal, and we're not sure if the Jackal will uh, appear on the board, but yeah, let's take that. So we increase in Jupiter again, once more. And it's the AI's turn. Places a card on Mars. Let's play this fast. Takes a card from D. He takes Justice. That's an odd number, so that's good. He takes an ability in the bonus location, and that's Mars. He gains another Helium. This is a second action. Places on Luna takes from B, which is Luna as well, um, this is even, takes the ability of Luna, which is the Jupiter, so increases on the fleet track as well. This is our turn now, this, wait, if we have the Jackal, two of these cards will be worth 30 points, just with the Jackal, so let's find an orange, because an orange can uh, take any name, or the exact Jackal card. How do we do that? We do that by Administrator because if we play the Administrator, it will place two cards underneath this card. You know, add more cards on the board. So we will play the Administrator card on Mars. It says if deployed on the Institute. So we will deploy him on the Institute for his ability to take effect. So we place him on the Institute. So we have the Orator and Researcher. So mm, not what we're looking for. So let's stay, do it like this. Right, so that's our first action. Let's pick up a card. I'm gonna pick up from the deck. And we got the Investor. Um, and then we roll the dice because we took from the deck. That's an Institute icon. We place another cube on the Institute. So what does the Investor do? Uh, allows us to choose a color other than silver and gain one helium for each card of that color. At this location so that is our turn it is the AI's turn now a lot of cards are pulling up in the Institute let's see the player places on B which is Luna takes from B so you just got an even number card a group counselor and takes the Luna effect and goes up on the fleet track number five now second action Places card on Mars. Takes from A. Now he got the administrator, which is an uh, an odd number, which is good. Less points for him, and he will take the location bonus. That's a cube. Right, 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 right. Let's do our turn. Let's just shut up and do our turn, right? I, I like this one. It allows us to gain another card. Conversationalist. Let me show you later. Uh, I'm gonna throw away the masseuse. We'll put it in Jupiter and it says move the top card of another location to the top card to the top of a different location and I'm gonna put it on I'm gonna take the conversationalist put it on Luna so that we gain the ability of Mars because of the Masu and now for my pickup action I'm gonna take the conversationalist to my hand and activate the Luna ability, I will gain the Sovereign token and our Luna ability says here to roll the Sovereign die. Sorry, the Rising die. We got Institute and we place a cube on the Institute and that's our turn. Looking good so far. I'm going to get that Orator using Conversationalist because it allows us to move uh, a card from another location to another location or to under this card. And if it is a white, I gain it without ending my turn. So I will then gain another card for that. So let's do the AI's turn. Places a card on C. 
takes a card from D. I hope he does not get the card from the institute because we're, that's what we're looking for. So he places a card on D and takes a card from Jupiter. Now he got the Pax out Telemanus. Increases one. He's now six on the fleet track. Now let's do uh, what I've been saying earlier. Let's play the conversationalist. Let's put her on Jupiter. I'm gonna put the orator. If it is a white, I gain it. So I just gain that orator. Then I will take another card, not from Jupiter. So I'm gonna take, I'm thinking of Dr. Virani or the researcher. Alright, you know what? Let's, let's take the institute because I just wanna increase on the institute there. So I'm now four on the institute and I have six cards, which is great. Now let's start building our combo after the AI's turn. Places a card on Jupiter, takes a card from B, which is Luna, takes that ability. But I'm going to stop him from gaining my sovereign token. Um, but still, he takes the effect of the Jupiter, so I will increase him to seven. He's now seven on the fleet track, and I'm going to banish this card and take a card from the deck. Sovereign token stays with me. I don't really know why I did that, but now for the next action of the AI, places a card on the Institute and takes a card from C. The Jackal! Oh no! That's what we're looking for. For these two cards, Calliope and Antonia. But yeah, whatever. She got it. With an effect on Jupiter. So it's now number 8 on Jupiter. Now it's our turn. Now that we don't have the Jackal, we need to find an orange card, which is hard right now. Random bench card. Let's, let's, let's throw away this Diana. I don't, I don't really like her. So let's gain one helium from her. And then I'm going to take the Firewall Expert because the Firewall Expert allows us to look at the three cards and then place one of them face down at the top of each uh, of the other locations. Alright, so I will take her from the Institute. I place one cube on the Institute now. That ends our turn. It's the AI's turn. So let me have a quick look at my cards and think what combo we're trying to build. Uh, I'm going to get an orange card so that we can uh, we can get 30 points for this one. Actually, we don't really want the orator. It just well we we also want him. Um, I just need to remove the sovereign token from me, but it's tentative. Let's see. The investor at the end of the game gain one helium for each card of that color on Mars. So I will choose a color and. I need to populate Mars if, if I want that. Now for the researcher, at the end of the game, banish cards. It's all, there's only one banish card, so researcher uh, doesn't really help us. I'm gonna throw the firewall on my next turn. So let's do the AI turn first. Places a card on C. I hope you bring out good cards. Takes a card from B and banishes a card from the top of the deck. And he banishes an orange card. So I guess, I think... Yeah, I have this one. Place a random... Ah, this is a random banish card. Anyway, let's see what we can do so we can get that orange card. Um, next, places on B. Takes from the Institute without an effect. Let's see the Firewall Expert. I'm going to use the Firewall Expert. I'm going to populate Mars for now. And then I will look at the top three cards of the deck. One, two, three. We have Bone Riders, Auctioneer, Victra. Victor doesn't uh, mix well with Antonia, so we don't want that. Auctioneer is actually good uh, playing with the AI. Oh man, Bone Riders also needs the Jackal. We don't have the Jackal, the AI got it. So yeah, let's let's just do this. I'm gonna put it here, whatever, here. Let's do it like that. And we're going to pick up from the Institute. We have the Auctioneer and the Institute. We place a cube there. We have six cubes on the Institute now. Um, it is now the AI's turn, places a card on A, takes a card from Luna, which is this face down odd card, and this banishes a card from the top, banishes a gold card, Carnus, another action, places a D, picks up from the Institute, so he got Nero, and places a cube there. 
Right, so that is the AI's turn. How about us? I really need an orange card. I'm gonna play the researcher so that um, if ever I got lucky, I, I uh, place the random banish card at the bottom of this location, which is the orange card. Let's put it here in Mars. And then I will take a random card, random banish card here, put it at the bottom of this location. <laughs> yes, it's the orange card. So now we have orange card on the board. Uh, let's just find a way to take that one from the bottom of uh, of Mars. Um, next, let's take a card. This one, move any card. Let's take Mateo. It allows us to move any other card from this location to the top of another location. Let's take that one. But uh, apparently, we have still have bad combination on our hands, so we don't want the game to end. But we will place a cube on Institute. So now let's take a look at the status here. I have three helium. I have two seven cubes on the Institute, and I am at number four on the fleet track. So I have triggered one of the end game condition, while the automat triggered the fleet track uh, end game condition. Still far from victory. Let's see. This is the AI turn. Places a card on Luna. Oh, another orange, which is good and on top and takes a card from the institute with an effect so he places another cube there is catching up not really c he places a card on a and takes a card from the jupiter without an effect so he got victra right so that is the ai's turn i'm thinking of getting scyther or whatever the name is let me compare it with artificer it says if with both another orange and a gold this one is with a blue. We have a blue on the board. We have the packs. Let's see the combination of the packs. If we Darrow, Severo, Orion, Virga, or Pelus. We don't have Severo, right? Darrow, we don't have. Um, Alright, since we will have two oranges because of uh, on the border, two oranges. Uh, I'm going to use the auctioneer. It says here, choose an opponent. That opponent chooses one. But the AI won't choose, we'll just roll the die. Uh, helium, Fleet Track, or Influence. Other results we re-roll. Right, so he... No, not that one. No, not a good roll. Right, no. Right, so he chooses Helium. And we gain the two other... Uh, other options here. So we advance on the Fleet Track and... Put a cube on the institute. Perfect. Now let's take a card. I'm going to take Cider that gives us a sovereign token and allows us to roll the die because that's the ability of Minerva. This is Fleet Track. Uh, we increase on the Fleet Track. We're now number six. Almost there. We have good combo now. That ends our turn. That's the AI's turn. AI's turn, the deck is. Um, used up so we we will add the four cards what we removed and just shuffle this deck and remove another four and start a new deck so we remove four this is the AI's turn places a card on Luna takes a card from A which is the Institute with an effect it places a cube there Next action, places a card on Jupiter, takes a card from B, which is Luna, and there's an uh, actually a star, so he will take the Sovereign token there, and the Luna effect, which is the Fleet Track. He's now at number 9. Let's, um, let's try to end the game. I will keep this. I will keep this too. I will name this orange guy Jackal, so that we have 30 points from these two. We don't have the Sovereign token, so we will uh, score with this from this one orator, but I'm not sure about that. The Investor, I don't really want the Investor. So let's do the pink one, Mateo. I'm gonna play Mateo. Move any card from this location so that, you know, we can get the orange one to the top of another location. So I'm gonna take the Artificer, place it on the Institute, and I'm gonna take that card to my hand. 
that allows us to put another cube on the institute. Yay! Right, so now we have two oranges. Um, one of them will uh, fulfill the requirements of these two. Let me zoom in there. This guy it says if with another orange and a gold, which is this another orange and this is a gold. So this fulfills its conditions. We have 30 points from this, 30 points and 30 points. We also have 30 points from the orator if we don't get the Luna or, or the Sovereign token. Um, for this one, we need a blue to give for him to give us um, 30 points. The investor we don't really need, so that's what we're going to play this round. So he will place a card on A, takes a card from Jupiter, then places a card on Institute, Mustang, takes a card from C, which is Jupiter as well, with an effect, goes up to 10 on the fleet track, and it's our turn. Now, we have Mustang, what does it do? 20 points plus 5 points for each other color. That 20, 25, 30, 35. 35, that's good. But uh, let's see, I want that blue card. So I'm going to play. I'm going to take Mateo. Uh, I'm going to put the investor here and it says here choose a color ad other than silver. And uh, whatever color I choose, I gain one helium for each card of that color in this location. So I will choose pink. Because there's two pink here, I will gain two helium for that. I'm now at five helium, almost uh, triggering the end game for both the fleet track and the helium. Now I will take a card. I will take Mateo, and then I will gain another helium for that. So I have Mateo in my hand now, which will play a big part later on because it's allow it allows us to get a card that we want from the location. So here's the AI's turn. Places a card on fleet track. We have Cashews. Takes a card from A. He he got Mustang, and he, he gets to place a cube there. Second action, places a card on C. Takes a card from B. He got mod job, and this uh, banishes a card from the top of the deck. He just banishes the psychologist. Right, it's our turn now. Mateo, do your thing. I will place Mateo on Mars. Move any other card from this location. I will take the packs, put it somewhere else. So I'm going to put it on the Institute so that I can put all of my cubes. I, I have one remaining cube here. Take it from the Institute, the packs. Put the last cube on the Institute so I, have, I can maximize that point. I have packs in my hand now. Let's take a, uh, a look at our hand before the AI turns. This two is good. This one will pretend to be Jackal. So this 30 points, 30 points. And this will also give us 30 points because we are with another gold and uh, another orange and a gold. Then this one will also give us 30 points now because we have a blue, right? And this, the, the packs, it says here it will give us 35 points if we have Darrow, Severo, Orion, Virga, or Pelus. I can name this card anyone I like, any name. I will for sure get 35 points for this one. Now that leaves us with the Orator. I don't know what to do with this orator, but if we don't have the sovereign token, we will get 40 points. Minus 10, of course, because we don't have the sovereign token. Not really minus 10, because sovereign token gives us 10 points. So technically that we are trading 10 points for 40 points. Anyway, 30 points from all of these cards. I think I'm happy with this. So on my turn later, I'm just going to maybe just scout. So let's see. Let's see what happens. This is the AI's turn. Places on D, covering Mateo there. Takes a card from the Institute with an effect, adds his cube there. Um, places a card on B and takes that card from B with a Luna effect. So he, he already has the Sovereign token, so no worries for that. And he increases in the Jupiter track, but it's already at maximum. So that's the AI's turn. But um, as you can see on the board, we are nearing the end game trigger. Um, currently, I have six helium. I have six uh, fleet track. I have all my cubes on the institute. So that's what I triggered. That's the end game I triggered. Uh, for the AI, he triggered the fleet track, not the helium. So he only triggered the fleet, fleet track end game. If for some reason he gains another cube on the institute, that will end the game because the end game condition is that if one player has triggered two conditions, the game ends or if um, collectively all the players met 
the three conditions, which is the seven on the fleet track, seven on the institute, and seven helium, which I am going to do right now because I have six helium, six on the fleet track. So, this my next move will probably no, not probably for sure end the game, and the AI will get one more turn for that. So, here's what we're going to do. Instead of getting helium, because helium is just three points, if I increase on the fleet track, I will get like well, uh, seven points. That's good, right? So what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do. Right, I'm just going to scout. Really, I'm just gonna put Fitchner on Jupiter, increasing us to seven. That ends the game because I have seven institute and seven on the fleet track i trigger the end game now the, the ai the automa will get one final turn before we count our scores so let's see what he will do here um he places on luna and takes from b which is luna with an effect so he gains an even number card and gains the luna effect which gives him jupiter but it's already maxed out there then the next action is places on C, takes from D. So places on C, takes from D, which is 9. We want that to happen. Alright, that is, that's it. We will, that ended the game. We will go to scoring. Alright, so before we score the Automa, we will just score ourselves here. Um, I'm gonna take this one. Alright, our end ability, end game ability. Let's start with the... Two orange guys here. One of them will be one of them will be the jackal. I take a note here. And then one of them will be Darrow. Why not, right? Darrow. Okay. That is our end game. We have Darrow and Jackal. For the AI, he he begins he has a base base score of 70 points. So we will add 70 here. On to our score. I usually use calculator in this because I'm not really good at <laughs> counting very fast, but let's try. So I have 40 points from the orator because we don't have the sovereign token. So we have 19 plus 21, that's um, 40. So 40 points plus 30, so that's 70. Then we have another 30 points from Antonia because we have the jackal, right? This one is acting as the jackal. Sorry, this is 35, not 30. So we are actually in 75 right now. 75 plus 30, that's 105. And then this one gives us 10 points, but gives us another 20 points if we are with a, an orange or a gold. We got 30 points from this, we have 135. And then we have another orange here. Uh, it says, it gives us 14 points. Gives us another 16 points if with a blue, we have a blue here, the packs. So that's another 30 points. We have 165 right now. 165 and the packs gives us 20 points plus another 15 if we have Darrow. This guy is acting as Darrow. So we will have plus 35. That's actually 200 points. We have 200 points if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so let's take a note of that. We have 200 points. Let's count our fleet track. We have we are at number seven. That gives us twenty-eight points. We have six helium. That's um, eighteen points, I believe. Um, we don't have the sovereign token, so that this is zero. Um, now this is interesting. We have uh, four points for each cube in in the institute. So we place all of our cubes there. That's a total of two, four, six, eight, ten. That's forty points. Oh wow! And we are not over 7 cards, so we don't do negative score there, we only have 6 cards. So let's see now, we, let's get the AI's total. Now to score the AI, very simple, sort out the cards. Very simple, sort out the cards, the even and the odds. So this is even, odd. Alright, now that we have separated the even and the odds, we will narrow down the AI's card to 20 cards starting with the odd cards because this is, this is not the main priority the main priority is even so we will start removing from this one so let's count first how many even cards he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 15 so we will take 5 cards from this deck 
right five cards that is now a total of 20 the rest of the um, odd number cards we will just throw away right so this is the card of uh, our automa he gains three points for each odd numbers and he gains six points for each of these um, even number so how many this is this is 15 multiplied by 6 that is 90 thanks to my calculator so that is 90 points for this even number that's 15 multiplied by 6 90 and then this is 3 3 6 9 12 15 and the total score of the AI is 105 that's 90 plus 15 so 105 he has a base score of 70, right? And then let's take a look at his fleet track. He is now 43, 3 helium, so that's 369. He has the sovereign token, that's 10 points. His cubes in Institute is 6, 2 points each, so that's 12 points only. And it's no penalty here. So let's do the total, see if we win. All right, so we have 200 here. 240, 268, plus 18, 286, if I'm not mistaken, let me confirm, right, so that is correct, we have 286 now for the AI, for the Automa, we have 105, plus 70, 175, plus 10, 185, plus 12, 197, we have these 2, plus 9, 200, 6 plus 43 249 I have officially won Red Rising against Automa um, This is just normal Automa though There are multiple difficulties You can go level up to level 6 And different scoring And I know you cannot see it in the video Because of the light I managed to do a good combo there Especially when I gained uh, I gained the white card because of, I think it's Mateo, no not Mateo, something, some, a card allowed me to take this white card without ending my turn so that brings up our hand to 6 cards and of course having more cards in Red Rising secures you a minimum of 10 points, just, just a bonus or additional 10 points up to 40 points and in, in this case I just managed to get 40 points from this uh, extra card. Uh, I worked hard for this one. I managed to get two orange card with uh, a bit of luck because I had to randomly draw from the banish uh, pile and add it on the, the board. And then the other one is just lucky. We just got it from the top of the deck and I used Mateo to control that one. And uh, really, um, very nice, nice experience. Nice, uh, nice game there and a good victory. Alright, that's it. This is my solo playthrough of Red Rising. Uh, I won against the uh, Automa, the normal Automa. I hope you enjoyed the experience just watching me play through that. Um, and once again, this is the Board Game Hero. Thank you for watching. See you again next time.